What the history. In our tech-savvy world full of emails, texts, snaps, grams, tweets, boops, and pops, okay, so I made those last two things up, it's easy to forget about a time when communication was not so easy. And no, I don't even mean the old-fashioned telephone call where you actually had to talk with your voice, but much longer ago. Before the telephone, there was the telegraph. Developed by this guy, Samuel Morse, in the 1840s, the telegraph revolutionized the way we communicated with each other at the time. Yes, whether by carrier pigeon or horseback courier, there were fewer quicker ways to get a message across town, let alone across the country. So when Morse came up with his famous code of signals to interpret letters and words over a wire, the possibilities of communication opened up greatly. The United States would soon be able to communicate within her own shores instantly. But what about internationally? In the old days, a single message took weeks to travel by boat from Europe to America. But after the telegraph's invention? Well, it still took weeks by boat because there was no telegraph cable connecting the two continents yet. Not until 1858, when the first transatlantic telegraph cable was laid across the Atlantic Ocean. In 1854, the Atlantic Telegraph Company began their four-year endeavor to physically run a communications cable on the Atlantic seafloor, 3,000 meters deep, spanning from North America to the British Isles. It would require thousands of miles of cable, weighing over one ton per nautical mile. Just so you know, a nautical mile is like a normal mile, just a little bit longer and sounds cooler, because we can just say knots instead of miles per hour, like we owned a yacht or something. Anyway. The cables were laid out by massive ships in segments with the ends spliced together by crews on each side of the project, one on the North American side in Nova Scotia and the other from Western Ireland, where they would eventually meet in the middle. Now these ships could haul 600 mile long segments of cable per voyage, then they'd have to return and get more. But what were these underwater lines actually made of? The freezing temperatures and salty erosion of the ocean water made for a difficult task to prevent damage. Also, have you seen those creepy deep sea fish out there? I'm sure they'd love to take a bite of one of those juicy cords if they could. Yikes. Ugh. Anyway, the original cabling had multiple layers to it. First was the core, which transmitted the actual signal, and it consisted of seven copper wires. Then that was coated three times in gutta persia, which was a type of natural latex rubber available at the time. And then finally, to top it off, the whole thing was wound in tarred hemp. Yes. But, as was often the result of hemp-based building plans, the initial cable didn't last long. In fact, it survived just three weeks. Worse still, there was literally a miscommunication between the two sides who were creating a communication system to avoid these types of mishaps in the first place. The cable crews on opposite ends each wound their cable in a separate direction which caused quicker deterioration. You know, it would have been nice for the American side to be on the same page as the British side. Maybe at least, I don't know, communicate their strategies via telegraph or something before they began. So they fixed the cable, and then the new transatlantic cable was ready for the first message from Queen Victoria to President James Buchanan, which read, An additional link between the nations whose friendship is founded on their common interest and reciprocal esteem. Ah, that's a really sweet message. And here's how James Buchanan, our president, responded. It is a triumph more glorious, because more useful to mankind than was ever won by conqueror on the field of battle. Uh, wait, is he actually bringing up the war again? Awkward. He continues, May the Atlantic Telegraph, under the blessing of heaven, prove to be a bond of perpetual peace and friendship between the kindred nations, and an instrument destined by divine providence to diffuse religion, civilization, liberty, and law throughout the world. Good save there, Jim. So that's the weird story of the time in history we put the first telegraph cable under the ocean from America to the British Isles. Though I'm still trying to imagine what our first message to England would be if the transatlantic cable were installed today. It'd probably be something like, Cable done, send Meghan Markle updates, lol. What. The. History.